Hello and welcome to another video in a new space. By which I mean I'm, I'm home for Christmas. <laughs> Today we're going to have another annual challenge wrap up. So this year I did the Back to Classics challenge as well as the Book Voyage challenge which I wrapped up in my last video. And for this one there's 12 prompts for different classics and you read them over the year. I had a lot of unread classics on my shelf at the start of the year so I thought this would be a good way to make myself read them and I was right it did make me read some of the books that have been on there for a very very long time and I enjoyed most of them. <laughs> I will put a link to the original challenge and the sign-ups and everything in the description in case you are interested um, and also as before I'm just going to show off my um, spread in my reading journal because I'm really pleased with it. I think it looks really pretty. I don't think you can see very well on camera, but this washi tape here, oh, there we go. this washi tape is like a marble effect and I think it looks really nice. So there we go, little brag of my, uh, <laughs> my reading spreads there. So without any further ado, let's get to the books. The first prompt was to read a book written in the 19th century and for this prompt I read Oliver Twist by Charles Dickens. Quick little shout out to these covers. I'm obsessed with this cover. These are the, what's they called? Uh, the Alma Classics? I think it's the Alma Classics editions. Yes, Alma Classics. I have a few classics in these editions and I, the covers are amazing. I, I love them so much. My main takeaway from this one is that I enjoyed the musical more. <laughs> partly because there's singing and dancing in it. Um, partly because there's less anti-semitism in the musical still some but less um and a lot more of it was actually about oliver twist <laughs> i did really enjoy this though i think uh and this is one of charles dickens earliest novels um and was written in a serial form so because of that it's kind of you know it's written with the intention of bringing you back for the next chapter because you are forced to go away and come back for the next chapter so it was definitely a page turner um, I'd say the first third is like the strongest part of this book in terms of plot. After that it goes on a little bit of a meander, <laughs> um, uh, but it eventually circles back to the plot at the end. I think at the point that I read this was just by coincidence at the same time as the sort of big uh, free school meals, I guess, scandal in the UK. So. Um, for anyone not in the UK, earlier on this year, um, then Twitter was in for all because the UK had provided free school meals for underprivileged children and they were terrible. <laughs> and reading this at the same time was, I kind of wanted to post a copy to certain members of the government and be like, read this, <laughs> learn some lessons from it. This is, it's not my first Dickens. Uh, I've read A Christmas Carol, loved it. I've read Hard Times, did not love it. I think this comes halfway between the two. I enjoyed it. I will probably read some more Dickens. The second prompt is a classic written in the 20th century. And for this one, I read Fahrenheit 451 by Ray Bradbury. And again, this is one that at the moment, felt pretty, pretty topical. <laughs> I feel like it's very well known that the title of the book comes from the temperature at which uh, paper, book paper, spontaneously catches fire um, and that it's set in a dystopian future where no books are allowed, they are burned. Um, and that is all true. I think I, like many other people, probably assumed that in this dystopian future the reason books were banned is because the government doesn't want you thinking and uh the kind of um censorship and that sort of thing whereas it's actually kind of the opposite that books were banned like by people gradually because they didn't want to be offended by new ideas <laughs> i mean it's basically twitter it's basically twitter I'm really glad I read this one. It didn't blow me away. Uh, I didn't get to the end and was like, I need to read everything Ray Bradbury's ever written. I might read some more, who knows. Um, 
but I did really enjoy it and it was very different from what I expected. The next prompt is a book written by a female author and for that one I read Wuthering Heights by Emily Bronte. Just like with Oliver Twist, same editions, obsessed with these and this gorgeous purple on the spine as well. You will do a whole video just being like, classics are pretty, I love this. <laughs> Again, this was not what I expected. All I knew going in was it was miserable, the Kathy and Heathcliff, something about those and a Kate Bush song. I, I, I mean, <laughs> it's wild. This book is wild. Some people are born terrible. Some people achieve terribleness. That's the motto of this book. Everyone is terrible. Like they're actually the worst. If in your mind, like me, if you think that this is about the romance between Kathy and Heathcliff, uh, it's, I mean, that's there. It's more about the knock on effect that had on their families and on Heathcliff's personality. <laughs> Um, it was amazing, but boy, was it strange. It was very strange. Um, I read this a while ago. I might reread it because I did really enjoy it. And I, I just can't, I can't stop thinking about it, you know, because it was just so weird, but so good. So good. I like that uh, Heathcliff is like, I'm going to be a terrible villain and become a landlord. I just appreciated that, you know. So yeah, Wuthering Heights, 10 out of 10. What an amazing book, but also what a weird book. Next, we have a book in translation, and for that I read Homer's The Iliad, or if you would rather, Troy Story. Again, this one I enjoyed much more than I thought I would. Uh, I love The Song of Achilles. It's my favorite book of all time. I love reading Greek retellings, and I thought, you know what, I should read the OG. I should read the OG. And I was expecting it to be very dry and dull, and it was not. It was good fun, it was very exciting, there was lots of drama and lots of action, and uh, you know, it, I mean, it read like an action movie, because it kind of was, but just a very old action movie. <laughs> I don't know how this translation compares to other translations. Uh, this is, this is the Penguin Cloth Banner Classics. And this translation is by E.V. Ryu, 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 um, revised and updated by Peter Jones with D.C.H. Ryu, edited with introduction notes by Peter Jones. So, I mean, it's a Penguin edition, so, you know, I trust Penguin to have a good translation. Um, but yeah, really enjoyed this one. Uh, I'm about to start reading the Odyssey as well to sort of complete the set. If you, if you are considering reading this, and you're putting it off because it's intimidating you will be surprised by how readable it is that was my main takeaway from this one the next prompt is a book written by a person of color and for this i read the river between by ngugi wathiongo this is quite a short story set in kenya in the early 20th century and follows the rivalry between two communities one of which follows the uh, traditional African culture and religion and the other of which is pretty hardcore Baptist Christian um, and how the fusing between the two of them um, affects the people caught in the middle and how the people who are trying to bridge the divide um, are unable to. I'm still not completely decided how I feel about this book. It was very well written, very uh, emotive, and the motives behind all the characters were really interesting. And seeing, basically seeing the effects of colonialism on this, uh, on this community, it was clear how devastating the effect of colonialism was on this community from a cultural perspective, as well as all the other perspectives. Um, and just the le level of the divide between the two um, and it definitely encouraged me to think about some things that I already thought I was sort of aware of in a different way. I'm really glad for this prompt, I deliberately like looked for a book that I hadn't heard of before um, because 
I've discovered a new author who I think I might read some more of. I'm, I'm intrigued. I'm intrigued to read more. The next prompt is a classic by a new to you author, an author you've never read before. And I have to confess, given the title of my channel, I've never read any other Conan Doyle. <laughs> I have now, I have now. I read A Study in Scarlet and The Sign of the Four by Arthur Conan Doyle. These are the first two Sherlock Holmes books. I listened to the audiobook narrated by Stephen Fry, which I highly recommend. It's Stephen Fry and Sherlock Holmes. What's not to love? It was so great. They were so great. Uh, I especially loved the sign of the four. I felt like the characters were really settled by then and we, this was felt like classic Sherlock Holmes. Um, and yeah, I'm really glad I finally got around to reading these and experiencing actual Sherlock Holmes. Yay! I have all the rest to go now. All the rest to go. The next prompt is a new to you book. So a book you haven't read before, but by an author that you have. And I read... Uh, Lady Susan, The Watsons and Sanditon by Jane Austen. This is, pr I think that's the last Jane Austen that I haven't read. I've read her six novels and some of her juvenilia. So I think, I think I'm all caught up. Now I just need her to release another book. Come on Jane, it's been a while. Give me something new. So obviously there's three stories in this volume. The first one is the only one that's complete and it is, I'm going to try and remember the word, a, a, pistol, a pistolator, a, it's written in letters, it's written in letters um, and it predates pretty much all of Jane Austen's prose I believe um, that and you can kind of tell that she was you know experimenting with different writing styles. I, there's an introduction in this volume which I found really helpful and useful and insightful to kind of understanding the three stories in here. What I really liked about Lady Susan is it's about a slightly older woman, she's in her 30s, so older than any of the heroines from Jane Austen's main six novels. Um, and I, it, because it's that a little bit earlier, it's a bit less Regency going into Victorian era sort of sensibilities and a bit more, a bit more sort of open about day to day life and the things that go going on. and. Yeah, I really appreciated that. I can see why she switched to prose and I'm glad she did, um, but I enjoyed it nonetheless. The Watsons was my least favourite of the three. Um, I felt like it's, I mean, it's always tricky reading a book with the main character has the same name as you. When they have the exact same name as you, it was a bit much, it was a bit much. And then Sanderton, Sanderton, I need to watch the TV show of Sanderton. Um, I think that was the one that was kind of quite bittersweet because you know it's what she was working on when she died and that she wanted to finish it. Like the Watsons she abandoned halfway through, you know she wanted to finish Sanderton. And it was sad that she never did. So yes, thanks to this challenge, I have read every Jane Austen. Whoop, whoop. The rest of the prompts for this challenge are a bit of fun, you know, different sort of prompts to get you just picking up different books. And the next prompt is a classic about an animal. The animal can be as metaphorical as you wish. It even says this in the prompt. And I'm saying this so that no one gets on at me when I tell you that I read Moby Dick by Herman Melville. I know the whale is a metaphor, but also it's a whale, so it counts. This was, mm, I mean, okay, first of all, Again, shout out to the cover. But it was 600 pages, of which about 400 are just facts about whales. And outdated facts about whales as well. I was like, can we, can we get on with the story now? And you know, I feel bad for the whale. I feel bad for the whale. That's my hot take on this book. Um, once I've finished filming this video, this one is going to the charity shop. The next prompt is a children's classic and this was a reread for me and it was What Katie Did by Susan Coolidge. I loved this book as a kid and I thought you know what I'm gonna reread it one more time as an adult and I can see why I enjoyed it as a child. Uh... <laughs> what Katie Did, it starts off as a sort of Little Women-esque setting of um, you've got this sort of big family and their eldest daughter, uh, Katie, as you can tell from the title, she's very adventurous and independent and free-spirited. 
and that's like a solid good half first half of the book um is all of her adventures and you know i was i can see why i enjoyed that as a child then halfway through she gets injured and is confined to her bedroom basically for the next four years and basically has a personality transplant and yeah it was just a lot of um a lot of ableism for the second half of the book i did talk about this a bit in my august wrap up i think when i when i read this book um and there were some things that i did sort of appreciate but uh it's definitely a window to the past this one <laughs> a bit of a you know look back into how we used to think of certain things and unfortunately how some people still think of certain things uh, especially when it comes to disability and health and injury and things like that um but I, yeah i can see why i enjoyed it as a child the character of katie is i mean she's just so great at least in the first well yeah i'd say she's yeah she's a great character she is a great character. The next prompt is a comedic or satirical book and I got really caught up on the satire part of this prompt and I just couldn't really find anything that interested me and then I thought about the comedic thing and I was like wait who's the OG rom-com writer? Jane Austen! So I reread Northanger Abbey and I listened to the dramatisation of this on Audible narrated by Emma Thompson. It's glorious, glorious um i loved this i loved this this is i think it's the earliest written of jane austen's like six main novels um but was published posthumously i believe and it follows catherine morland who is a young bookworm she's 18 she reads gothic literature like there is no tomorrow and she gets invited to go to bath with her it's like family friends and of course Jane Austen shenanigans ensue you've got friendships and romance and betrayals and Henry Tilney who he knows muslin he knows muslin so you know he's clearly <laughs> clearly a catch clearly a catch and he is a catch what I love about this one and it's also kind of what lets it down but it's also what I love about it is that 75% of this book is classic Jane Austen and then you have this one random bit halfway through where she just like makes up a murder plot and then that gets forgotten and they move on. <laughs> um, but yeah, I had a great time listening to it. The dramatisation was so much fun. Um, and yeah, I'm really glad I got a chance to, to revisit this one because I've only read it once and it was a while ago. And I watched the film recently and really enjoyed that. So yeah, really glad I got around to reading this one again. The next prompt is a travel or adventure classic and I read 20,000 Leagues Under the Sea by Jules Verne. Again, shout out to the cover. I'm obsessed with these, these covers. They're gorgeous. And you can't really see, uh, but it's like embossed the uh, or engraved the, um, the text. I've never read any Jules Verne before this and I really, really enjoyed it. It was so much fun, so many adventures and shenanigans, so many iconic characters. And iconic scenes and moments in this book but what I really liked is he's a bit of a prophetic guy Jules Verne you know he could like some of the things that were written about which were fantastical at the time are real now <laughs> or are still our understanding of things which I, I thought was just it was just awesome it was great I will say this is a very old translation it's so old they don't even have the translator credited in this edition which makes me think that it's the original english translation which missed or cut out toned down a lot of the uh i would say undertones but it's not really undertones just like full-on criticizing the british empire um and i would be intrigued to read a more modern translation that is a bit more direct as to Jules Verne intentions of this story. I absolutely loved it. I can't wait to read more Jules Verne. Um, yeah, it was great. I had a great time. The final prompt was to read a play and I listened to a recording of The Tempest by William Shakespeare. I thought I knew the plot of The Tempest. I did not know the plot of The Tempest, but now I do. <laughs> 
uh, I had a great time listening to this. Um, again, so many wonderful moments, so many of my favourite Shakespeare lines and monologues are from The Tempest and that sort of magical, mystical setting. I had a great time, I loved it. It was really, really, really great to kind of uh, experience that properly. If you are looking to read more Shakespeare, but the thought of sitting down and reading Shakespeare is quite intimidating, which is fair enough, then I really would recommend listening to like, audio recordings because, I mean, it's an audio book, but just with a cast and it's a play as well. So, you know, that's how it's kind of meant to be experienced. It's a bit more like how it's meant to be experienced. And you can find them all on like Spotify and places. Um, so yes, that's a, a recommend, I would recommend that way of reading more Shakespeare. And that's it, that's the challenge. I completed it, just about completed it two days ago. Um, and I'm really glad I did this challenge because most of the books I read were already on my shelf and had been sat there intimidatingly for a long time and this made me read them. And I enjoyed nearly all of them. <laughs> um, so yeah, thank you very much for watching this video. Uh, any written reviews are, and a list of all the books are in the description, as are all of my socials, etc. Leave a comment if you've read any of these, what you thought of them. Give this video a like if you enjoyed it, all these things, and I will see you next time. Bye!